Recently, while I was googling around, I came across this article about Hungary. Or rather, an American guy living in Hungary and his experiences. Being Hungarian and having grown up in Hungary naturally piqued my interest. Three Depressing Realities About Living in Eastern Europe by Matt Forney, dated 30th of November 2017. In January of this year, I packed my things and got on a one-way flight to Budapest, Hungary to start my life anew after nearly two years of living in Chicago. Do I like it here? Mostly. Don't get me wrong, Hungary and everywhere else in Eastern Europe is a massive upgrade over the US in everything that matters. The streets are clean and safe, what? The women are cute and loose, and the cost of living can't be beat. Well, as long as you have an American salary, I guess. But after nearly a year in pussy paradise, the bloom is off the rose. W pussy paradise, what? Here are some annoying realities of living in Eastern Europe that you'll just have to get used to if you're an expat. Oh, expat, huh? Keep that word in mind, folks. But who is Matt Forney and what is Return of Kings? First, the website itself. Uh, it has a helpful about section where they write Return of Kings is a blog for heterosexual masculine men. Okay. It's meant for a small but vocal collection of men in America today who believe men should be masculine and women should be feminine. Okay. Return of Kings aims to usher the return of the masculine man in a world where masculinity is being increasingly punished and shamed in favor of creating an androgynous and politically correct society that allows women to assert superiority and control over men. And Jesus, victim complex much? Sadly, yesterday's masculinity is today's misogyny. The site intends to be a safe space on the web for those who don't agree with the direction of that Western culture is headed. If you're new, check out the top. <laughs> Women and homosexuals are strongly discouraged from commenting here. All right. Return of Kings community believes the ideas and beliefs here are based on neo-masculinity. Here are a few of its principal tenets. Men are generally different, blah, blah, blah. Men will opt out of monogamy, blah, blah, blah. Best traditions, rituals, testosterone, woman's value is fertility and beauty, gender roles good, socialism, feminism, cultural Marxism and social justice warriorism aim to destroy the family unit, decrease the fertility rate and impoverish the state through large welfare entitlements. Yeah, so this is Return of Kings, kinda yikesy, traditional conservative, but with a pickup artist uh, veneer on it. Founded by Rouge V, uh, a particularly notorious and toxic uh, pickup artist, I should say. So what articles does this website has to offer? Two Signs to Identify a Liberal in Disguise, by Edgar True, September 30th, 2018. 1. They support women's rights. I hold the claim that allowing females to vote was a rotten call of judgment by men, and to this day there are conservatives, in quotation marks, who support this decision. Personally, I find it anti-conservative and pro-liberal to allow women to vote. That doesn't equate to hating them, but rather recognizing they lack logic, which by their very nature means they cannot vote in accordance with law and order, safety and security. It isn't complex, unless of course you're a female, in which you may not possess the intellect to grasp the overall societal implications of such a manner. Conservatism has a foundation. It does not stray from tradition. In the ancient world, men dominated and women submitted or were put in their place if they were too disobedient. I mean, far be it from me to kink shame, but Edgar, my boy, you're making it real difficult for me right now. Any man or woman who supports women's rights to vote in terms of political power is liberal-minded. Beware of those prancing around right-wing circles who still hold this delusional libertarian-esque mentality. They are not conservative in their hearts of hearts. And here I gotta say, uh, English isn't complex, unless of course you're Edgar, uh, in which case you may not possess the intellect to grasp the overall grammatical implications of such a language. Moving on, let's look at what our friend Matt Forney has been up to. How Donald Trump is inspiring a masculine renaissance in America. Why electing Donald Trump is the only way to preserve freedom of speech in America. Make no mistake, if Hillary Clinton becomes president, she will kill free speech in America. If you value the freedoms bequeathed to you by the Constitution, you have no choice but to support Donald Trump. His persuasiveness and openly nationalist platform make him the only candidate capable of halting and possibly reversing the left's destruction of our nation. The simple reality is that freedom of speech in America, as well as the other freedoms we take for granted, only came about because of the US was founded by whites. Free speech, the rule of law and the entire framework of our society evolved out of the unique culture of Europe. 
starting with the ancient Greeks and developed by the theologians of the Reformation and the philosophers of the Enlightenment. Oh, you mean that philosophical movement espousing liberty, progress, tolerance and fraternity? The thing modern liberalism is based on? The movement that Mary Wollstonecraft was a part of, who, according to Wikipedia, was one of England's earliest feminist philosophers, she argued for a society based on reason and that women as well as men should be treated as rational beings. But of course our friend Matt has no fucking idea. When far writers like him talk about European culture and European history, what they imagine is white people who first wear togas and then armor and then long coats together with powdered wigs and then eventually we get to the present time where feminists and SJWs ruin everything. The only way freedom of speech can be preserved in the US is if whites remain a majority and Donald Trump is the only candidate who's fighting to ensure this. Hillary Clinton will do the opposite. Flood this country with foreign peasants who will give electoral heft to her campaign and destroy freedom in America. Whew, these immigrants, am I right? Just like wanting to go to other countries willy-nilly and, you know, live there and use their social services. Good thing you're a fucking expat and not an immigrant, dude. Oh, wow, you dodged that bullet. Moving on with the articles. Google's anti-white sketch of the Juno mission team shows how evil the company has become. And it's a Google Doodle depicting the people who worked on the Juno mission and on the right there's the panel. And people on the panel are all white and the doodle contains brown people as well. And Matt writes, however, falsely depicting a team of white men as a multi-ethnic, multi-gender team is apparently acceptable. Yeah, don't forget guys, the left are the real snowflakes. They get triggered over shit like police brutality, while ignoring the real issues such as brown pixel people on the Google main page for like a day or so. Why you should shun girls who support abortion. My argument for shunning girls who are pro-abortion is based in self-preservation. Regardless of her other apparent qualities, if a girl is in favor in abortion, there is evil dwelling in her soul. If you let her into your life, she will do her best to ruin you and bring you down to her level. How to register to vote for Donald Trump. Why Donald Trump's immigration speech was a massive success. Three reasons why you should apply for a job in the Trump administration. Unite the Right Rally in Charlottesville shut down by city government and their violent leftist allies. And for those of you not up to date, uh, Charlottesville was this uh, far-right rally, counter-protest, I, I should say, against the removal of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee statue that ended in a domestic terrorist attack when James Alex Fields Jr., a participant of the Unite the Right Rally and a neo-Nazi and white supremacist, rammed his vehicle into a line of counter-protesters, killing one and injuring 19. Meet the billionaire Jewish family funding Breitbart and Milo Yiannopoulos. While Return of Kings has no ill will towards Milo or Breitbart, we believe it is important that people know how they're funded. Milo and Breitbart are not an organic nationalist resistance, but are being used to push the agenda of a wealthy Jewish family. Well, this guy went down a fucking rabbit hole, holy shit. And now let's circle back to the original article, three depressing realities about living in Eastern Europe. Let's find out what Matt thinks is so depressing over here. One, many basic services are horrible. And here he spends three paragraphs bitching about the postal services. When DHL failed to deliver a box of nutritional supplements, I had to ride all the way to the end of one metro line, take two separate trams, then walk to their headquarters for 20 minutes to pick it up. Holy shit, the, tr the fucking trials and tribulations you have to go through, dude. Walk for, for, for tw what, 20 minutes? Holy shit, how did you survive? Yeah, well, jokes aside, dude, it sounds like you need to develop your discipline. Because if you're like most men, there's a gap between your intentions and your actions. You know what you need to do to get what you want, but you have difficulty in following through. Okay, so what other tribulations were you forced by life to go through? In another example, I once went to a Vodafone store to top up my phone plan 20 minutes before closing time and was told that they might not have time to do it, even though the store was empty and topping up takes about 3 minutes. Oh man, the, the Herculean tasks you face every day. 2. Convenience is middling to non-existent. I didn't expect Europe to be full of 24-hour Walmarts where I could just wander in at 3 in the morning in my boxers and do my grocery shopping. However, Europe is missing a lot of comforts that Americans take for granted. For example, Sunday shopping is severely restricted in Hungary, with most stores closed. Oh yes, this uh, unpopular measure that was cancelled since then, which was originally instituted by Hungary's conservative right-wing government, officially so that people can spend more time with their family. Similarly, Europeans love to nickel and dine people, and many things that are free in the US cost money over here. 
For example, not only do you have to pay for plastic bags when you go shopping, you have to bag your own groceries like a slave. <laughs> You have to bag your own groceries like a slave. Oh god, dude, the, the fucking masculinity is just like shining through here. Truly a descendant of fucking Leonidas himself. You have to pay to use a shopping cart, though you get refunded when you're done. You have to pay for ketchup when you go to McDonald's. You even have to pay to use the bathroom in many places, even at restaurants where you already bought something. I like being able to go out and buy groceries at 10 at night if I need to, and I don't like having to carry a dozen coins in my pocket in case I need to use the can when I'm out. I definitely don't like having to bag my groceries, because that's what retail workers are for. And also because I forget to bring a bag when I go shopping half the time. Well, it sounds like you do need that discipline. Anyway, let's step back for a bit and take a look at this thing from a distance. On one hand, Matt is complaining about all these leftists bringing up issues such as inequality, racism, sexism and privilege, while he writes articles for a far-right pickup artist website where he complains in front of thousands of people about the minor inconveniences he had suffered in Eastern Europe. But if you live in Hungary and your biggest problem is that you have to bag your own groceries at the store or having to put a coin into the shopping cart, you are in fact extremely and almost offensively privileged. And the worst part is, this is so natural for you that you don't even realize it. When this article was written, the average annual wages adjusted for purchasing power parity in Hungary were one-third of the US's. And if you're a single working person in Budapest, the city is unaffordable to you, even if you're making above average money. So it would be pretty difficult to uh, live out this tradcon, stay-at-home wife existence there, because it's just not an option. Both of you have to work. You know, it's pretty hard to be the traditional masculine breadwinner alpha male when two-thirds of your salary go to rent. But now let's go on to the spicier parts of the article, which is number three, degeneracy is increasing. And there's a picture of a pretty nice tattoo here. It's the, it's the Hungarian folktale series that was very popular on TV. It's a pretty nice tattoo. It's very culturally traditional Hungarian. So Matt writes, don't get me wrong, the most degenerate day you'll have in Hungary is better than an average day in the US. Open homosexuality is either non-existent or barely noticeable in Eastern Europe, and women on average are better looking and more feminine here. Dude, what's your problem with gay people? Like, they're, they're literally the only demographic that will not be competition to you. The more gay guys there are, the better your chances. But of course, he's just using this pickup artist thing as a vehicle for his far-right views, so eh. However, globalism's effects are increasingly evident even in this corner of the world. For example, in Hungary, tattoos, piercings and cotton candy colored hair are becoming more prevalent among young women. Uh, Matt, uh, I'm sorry, oh, hold on a second, I think you made a mistake there. Uh, what you meant to write is, I have a strong feeling in me that in Hungary, tattoos, piercings and cotton candy colored hair are becoming more prevalent among young women. This is what you meant. Budapest has an increasing number of bars and cafes with tattoo parlors on site so you can get a dragonfly stamped on your ass while you enjoy a cup of coffee. Hungarian women are also starting to get fat, okay, which becomes obvious if you cross the border into Ukraine. The women suddenly gain two points of attractiveness and lose 20 pounds on average. Uh, once again, keep in mind, if he was honest here, uh, he would have begun every sentence with I feel like. This is not any sort of evidence or empirical study or data, this is his feelings we're listening to right now. His subjective impression from a very limited perspective. At this point he spent less than a year here, uh, he doesn't speak the language and I guess he never left Budapest, or just very rarely. And by the way, in 2017, Hungary was the third most obese country in Europe, with 26.4% of its population classified as obese, only outdone by Turkey and the UK. And this number in Ukraine is only 2.3% lower, so, you know. Excuse me, Matt, if I don't entirely trust your intuitions over here. Similarly, Tinder, once one of the easiest ways to meet women in Eastern Europe, has significantly dropped off in quality over the past year. In Budapest, women on Tinder have become increasingly flaky, refusing to answer messages and using the app to gain attention from men. And I'd like to draw attention to his phrasing here. It's not that women don't answer, they refuse to answer. Or, you know, maybe they just found your articles online, who knows. But you make it sound that uh, women, in your opinion, have an obligation to answer to your messages. This kind of attitude being a staple on r slash nice guys. Smartphone addiction and online attention whoring have also been on the increase in Eastern Europe, meaning that meeting girls is only going to get more difficult as time wears on, though the further east you go, the slower these trends are occurring. I don't mean to sound negative. I've enjoyed my time in Hungary so far and would not even entertain the thought of moving back to the US. 
Despite having to bag my own groceries, the quality of life in Eastern Europe is incredible for you, and I'm grateful that I'm able to live out here. But anyone who thinks that this part of the world is all sunshine and blowjobs will be sorely disappointed. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't realize they have to pay for the toilet yet. You just wait, you starry-eyed, naive American immigrants, I mean, sorry, expats. The reason I find this article fascinating is because Matt here is guilty of all the stereotypes he assigns to other people he doesn't like. He immigrates to another country and then berates it for not adhering to his ultra-conservative norms and condemns its people for being too degenerate for his pure tastes. Meanwhile, he lives in an inner city bubble, living the life of hedonism, and bitches about minor inconveniences like a baby. But of course he isn't part of the problem. It's all these immigrants, these brown people, these SJWs, these Muslims, these feminists, these socialists, these communists. But if people like him just took a minute, pulled their heads out of their own asses, and just stopped looking at the world through this lens of entitlement and petulance, they would perhaps see how fucking ridiculous they are and how much of a belligerent assholes they act like and maybe they would change for the better and bag their own groceries without complaining. Until then, Matt and people like you, please just go home. Eastern Europe has enough problems without you and honestly, if you want to live here, first you need to learn to respect the local culture. Thank you for watching, if you have any input, please let me know in the comments, otherwise I'll see you next time and like, subscribe, all that. Bye!